Hello everyone, Sojin here back again with another video. I am here with something that I normally do once per year, and that is my yearly Nintendo Switch game collection videos, which I usually do once per year because they change up so frequently. So um, I have here actually a total of 77 games. My goal, of course, is not to have a lot of games it's more so to have a good quality of games games that i see myself replaying for years to come uh with that being said this time around i'm doing something a bit different i'm actually going to start off uh with the least favorite game of the list and go all the way up to my most top favorite game of all time it's basically going to be a tier list video of my entire Switch game collection. So, with that being said, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon, hit all notifications. It helps me out in tremendous ways. And check out Daniel White's Pangipedia Plus music down below in the description. You could buy his physical CD still. There are only a handful of those left. Uh, that is the music that is going to be playing throughout this entire video. All right, with all that being said, without any further delay, let's start off with the absolute bottommost part of the barrel. If you could even call it the bottom of the barrel, I would say it's the shit stain outside of the barrel underneath because the per because because someone put the barrel on top of a pile of shit. <laughs> Here is goodbye world. Oh, I don't mean to actually just be that aggressively mean about this game, but this game is just horribly... Ugh. <clears throat> this game is not good. I won the game in a giveaway, and I've literally played this game and beat it in literally a little over than an hour. <sighs> I don't want to really spoil what this game is about, but it's very dark. Dark in themes, and... The story does not have a good ending at all. Basically, this game's about two girls who are making a game. This is the main character right here, who's very blah about everything. She doesn't care about anything. She barely even cares about her own game. And the girl here is supposed to be the optimistic one who's trying to help her out. And it just doesn't work out. Like, real life just hits them over and over again. In real, and, and they realize, yeah, they gotta get real jobs and... It just doesn't end well. It, uh, the ending just pulls the strings at your heart in like the wrong way. <sighs> Here's the inside. I'm gonna show it off real quick. I'm not gonna go through too much details. Here are the stickers it comes with, which is kind of nice. I'm not gonna really show off the posters, but believe me when I say this, that poster is very small and it literally is the entire image that you see here in the front cover with the shitty text. I'm holding on to it because, like I said, it's the first ever game I won in a giveaway. Next up, at the bottom of the barrel, actual bottom of the barrel this time, right above that one, is RPG Maker MV. Uh, this is at the very bottom because I haven't really played this all that much since I got it. I kind of went out of my way to get this on a website called Mercury. I got this because I really wanted to work on a game based off of a story that I have fully completed and written since high school. I do have plans to use this to make the game, and it's gonna take me a very long time. It's gonna be a very long, drawn out project. I'm gonna pick it up every now and then and work on it whenever I can. It's at the bottom of the barrel because it's not, I can't really consider this a game. It's a learning curve and I still have yet to learn what I have to learn. But anyway, here's the inside, really nice art. There's a cartridge, very simple. At number 75, which is right above RPG Maker, is It Takes Two. Now I know this game is not fully complete on the cartridge. There is additional download that is required. It Takes Two is one of those weird Switch games that honestly requires you to actually have a second player to play. What frustrates me about this game though is that it forces you to be in split screen mode, even though your friends can join online co-op for free and play with you. Online, I'm not even kidding. 
all they really got to do is just, yeah, go on the eShop and download the thing that's necessary that's for free. All they got to do is just type in It Takes Two. As long as you have or one of you has the game itself, it doesn't matter. Really nothing on the inside at all. Honestly, this is a throwaway game. It's okay. It's a lot of fun. Actually, a lot more fun than I expected. I played for a little while with my friend Captain Derby, and we had a lot of fun with this. So I do look forward to playing this on the channel someday with Cami. At number 74, I have here Angry Alligator. Speaking of Captain Derby like I just did, this is one of the many other gifts that he has sent me. And honestly, I'm really happy to have it. You play as a gator, and apparently there are hum some humans that took over your swamp, and your goal is to wreak havoc in many different creative and hilarious ways to push them out and reclaim your home. So it's a very simple game. There's really nothing on the inside at all. I kind of want to wait and play this on my own on the channel someday with Cami, and I want to do it blind. So that's kind of why it's at the bottom because I haven't really played it played it yet. Next up at number 73 and I know there's going to be some people that don't agree with me on this but hear me out. Number 73 I picked the Dragon Quest trilogy. Basically all three Dragon Quest games on the cartridge. Really nice package to have. I only have this all the way at the bottom because I only ever beat the first game and it was okay. Uh, it was one of those weird original RPGs that you only had one character. And the game was very short. It wasn't hard as long as you grind it, of course. But these games are very grindy. They are remade from the ground up. They look vastly different than the original games. Uh, it would have been nice to see the original version of the games, too. Either way, I still have yet to play the other two. They're okay. They're not the best in the world, but... If I have an RPG itch for an original, original RPG game, this would definitely be it. Uh, I came to this right after Dragon Quest XI-S, of course, which is much higher up in the list, but we'll get to that eventually. Of course, here's the inside. There's nothing there. At number 72, I have here Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. The only reason why I have this at such a lower part of this tier list is because... I haven't really played this at all since like the PS2. This of course is the inside art that I reversed because it does have the spine there which is still nice. Here's the cartridge itself and that's the original outside cover. I don't know I just like the reverse art cover more so that's why I have it like this. I know a lot about this game only based off of reviews I've seen. Uh, I have had some stuff spoiled to me but not a whole lot and I do look forward to playing this game but right now on the channel I'm trying to play each Final Fantasy game in order up until Cammy wants to hop in and experience some of the Final Fantasy games but she wants to experience Final Fantasy 6 and forward but I do look forward to playing this game on the channel and number 71 I had to pick Final Fantasy 7 and 8 remastered of course this is a custom Final Fantasy 7 cover here. Ah, here we go, actually. The name of the seller is called Attainable Arts. So you could find them on Etsy. And they do have this custom cover, which is really nice. They also have one for Final Fantasy 8 as well. Here's the inside. I reversed it, of course. This code here doesn't work anymore, so you can try to enter it if you want. But it won't work. But yep, there's the cartridge. What's interesting about this one is that it has the original Final Fantasy VII on here with cheats added and everything, so it also gives you the opportunity and option to fast-forward battles, which is really nice for this original game. And Final Fantasy VIII is the only remastered one on here, which is quite interesting. And number 70, I had to pick Final Fantasy X and X-2. Now, this is the Japanese version. This is the HD remaster, of course. The difference between this Japanese version that looks exactly like this versus this one on the screen, I'll try to put an image up right there. This one right here contains both games on the cartridge. No additional download required. The US version of this game 
only came with 10 on the cartridge and then 10 2 came on a separate code that you had to download so basically once you use that code you can never use it again and you would permanently have the sequel to 10 digitally on your switch which i don't like at all this cartridge here contains both full and complete games on here i believe there's some psp exclusive stuff on here as well which is really nice and number 69, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more than that, is Final Fantasy IX. Already, as you can see, that what aggravates me the most about this copy of the game is painfully obvious. I really wish it was top down, but yeah, it's at a higher level than 10 and 10 2. I have played this game for a little while on my own for the first time ever on the Switch, and I started to thoroughly enjoy it. So, yep, inside, nothing at all. Congrats, Square Enix. You, you basically uh, made very boring looking stuff here. I don't know much else about it except for reviews I've watched on it. And of course, the handful of hours I did play. Yeah, there's that, and number 69. <laughs> and number 68, I have here Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. Of course, I had to put this one above the others because it is the best in quantity i guess and in my opinion quality as well these are all six original games fully remastered and so far as i've been playing the first one on the channel it looks visually superior to the original game i'm actually quite enjoying it and the musical score is a lot better than the original if you can find this for a really good deal highly recommend it once i get to the sixth one that is going to be probably either an edited or a live stream series that I'm going to do with Cammy because Cammy looks forward to experiencing six and forward with me, which I look forward to. This, of course, is the Play Asia version of the game, which has this really nice art on the inside. No ESRB on the front cover there. And number 67, I had to pick Cuphead. Yes, Cuphead. <laughs> It's funny, um, I actually recently just got this game as a gift from my friend Captain Derby. Uh, Cuphead is one of those games that he sent me. Uh, he randomly messaged me and he's like, hey, you might want to check outside your door. And I saw an Amazon package and that's how I got this game. And I started playing this game recently. It's a very hard game. It's all the way at this lower part of the list because this game is absolutely aggressively frustrating. But when I play this game on the channel and I'm interacting with people, it's more fun to play, if that makes sense. Cuphead is not for everyone, but I really love the art style. The art style is really nice. It gives you that very smooth animation that gives you that same feel of like OG cartoons from the early 1900s, whenever they first started animating. So it just looks really good. Here's the inside. I'm not going to go into too much details. They have these individual cards here. I'm not going to take out because I would ruin that there. But if you want to check that out, there is an older unboxing video that I have on my unboxing playlist where I unboxed my friend Dan's copy of this game where I showed off the cards. I'll leave a link in the description to my unboxing playlist. Here's the rest of the art on the inside. Really nice. I highly recommend picking this game up if you like OG cartoons and if you also like a challenge and don't mind the game being so freaking hard that you'll pull out the remaining hair out of your freaking scalp. And number 66, I have Dead Cells Return to Castlevania. This of course is the reverse art that was on the inside. I'll show the inside in a little bit so you can see the original art cover. It's a really fun game, definitely is another really hard game as well, but I'm more than likely to pick this game up and play it than I am with Cuphead. Basically, Dead Cells is a roguelite type of game. You play as some sort of like cell-like creature. The terrain changes a lot, and it's a really hard game. Once you die, it changes everything, all layouts. It'll get annoying fast <laughs> if it's not your type of game. Very simple, I have really nothing else to say about this game, except that it, 
Except if you like roguelike games and metroidvania type of games and you like Castlevania, this would be it. This is a really fun game to play. And number 65. I know my friend Dan is going to be upset with why this game is all the way at the bottom here. But at uh, number 65, I had to pick Switch Sports. Uh, Nintendo Switch Sports is a lot of fun. I will say that. Uh, I only find myself really playing this game with other people, uh, specifically with my friend Dan. I don't really play this all that much on my own, which I probably should, but uh, it's it's a fun game. If you like sports, if you like Wii Sports, you'll like this game a bit more. In my honest opinion, it is better than Wii Sports in some ways, but also Wii Sports Resorts is better than this game, so I don't know. Either way, for it being like one of the only official sports game on the Nintendo Switch by Nintendo themselves, it's not bad. It's a lot of fun. At number 64, I had to pick Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics in 1. I picked this above Switch Sports because I actually have more fun playing this than Switch Sports. This is a really good game to have, especially if you have family over or if you have friends visiting on the regular. It is just the great game to pick when you have nothing else to play, you don't know what else to play. My only issue with this collection is that you do not have full access to all 51 games up front because the game can play up to four players but the more players you have the less games you have to play which is really annoying and the less players you have like two players and three players and so on you have more options however yes there are exclusive games on here that make it so that you have to have other people who own this game play on their own separate consoles it's quite interesting it's weird it's annoying i still recommend picking it up if you can find it for a decent price here's the inside really colorful i actually really like this at number 63 i had to pick sonic frontiers uh sonic frontiers is the game of all time i am of course quoting someone on youtube i don't remember his name but sonic frontiers is one of those games that when i first got it on the switch i was very hyped for it i was super excited to get into this game and play it only to be let down with the performance at the very beginning and to be let down with a lot of things on this game. Like, I have a love-hate relationship with this game. There's uh, there's some stuff about the game that I really do like, and especially with the newest update that just dropped that gives the opportunity to play as other Sonic characters, which reminds me a lot of Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. It kind of motivates me to play the game again. This game is not perfect. It's I feel like there's too many things wrong with the game that I feel like is unacceptable for a game that literally just came out in the 2023, I want to believe. I don't know. I was very hyped for this game, only for the hype to quickly be sapped away from me. Of course, the inside, there's nothing at all. Not surprised there. There's a cartridge. It's all right. I want to enjoy this game more. I used to be a Sonic fan. I grew up with Sonic games. I grew up with Sonic Adventure and moving forward. And I've just been disappointed like crazy with many Sonic games after this game. I have to give it more of a chance. I'm very indifferent on it at the moment, but I don't have any plans to get rid of it. I do want to play it on the channel someday. At number 62 on the list, I had to pick Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It is a lot of fun. Uh, I actually have more fun playing this to Sonic Frontiers and all the other games that I showed off so far. Uh, this is an easy to pick up game to play with any friends and even play on your own. And with the newest DLC that I have free access to because of Switch Online, this game has opened up so much more for me. Yeah, like I said, even when playing on your own, this game is pretty fun. So here's the inside, of course. I grew up with Mario Kart games on the Nintendo GameCube. I never really played Mario Kart way back when on the N64 or even Super Nintendo. I highly recommend this for anyone who loves racing games. Like I said, it has a lot to offer. Way more than any other Mario Kart game has ever offered before. I can't really say much else about Mario Kart except if you're not playing Mario Kart, what are you doing with your life? Anyway, <laughs> at number 61, I had to pick Super Smash Brothers ultimate this is a very dented beat up steelbook case that i got online for like 12 bucks off of somebody but of course here's the inside i do have the original case somewhere but i'm not going to go digging it out 
I gotta say, this game I have a lot of fun mostly playing with my friend Captain Derpy, of course. I do have a live stream thing going on with that. Um, I highly recommend this, like I said, for anybody who likes fighting games and likes seeing Nintendo characters beating each other up. And I gotta say, this is the largest roster so far that I've seen in any Smash Brothers game. But it honestly makes me feel nostalgia for the older games. I really want to see Nintendo bring back Smash Brothers 64 at the very least on the Nintendo 64 app for Switch Online. But yeah, this is so much fun. I don't really have much to say. It's it's a Smash game. At number 60, I had to pick Minecraft. Minecraft is a lot of fun. And for those who do have me added on Switch, we'll see that Minecraft is one of the games that I spent many, many hours on. The only reason why it's at such a lower tier on this list is because over time it stops being fun. And I kind of want to revisit it again and try to play some of the modded related things on there that are vastly different than the main game. The main game overall is kind of becoming boring to me, which is why I haven't played it in such a long time. And I don't know if I really want to revisit it on the channel anytime soon, unless like it has certain certain mods that I've been looking for, if they are available for purchase, like Falling Falling and so on. Just I want to I want to spark respark my joy for this game again. And number 59. I have here the Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, the Steelbook Edition. Really, really nice. This actually came with a retro looking VHS type of box. I'll try to leave an image up there for you to see it. And yeah, I put the art booklet on the inside. Really cool. There is the game itself. You can check out my unboxing videos down below in the description as I basically show off the entire contents of that art booklet. But really nice to have. This is really honestly a love letter for those who grew up with the Ninja Turtles and love the 80s and early 90s. So I highly recommend this. The art style is really nice. You could play this with anyone and also play on your own, of course. The music is phenomenal. I really like the steelbook case and how it's a little 3D. I don't have much else to say it's, except this is just a really good game to have to throw into your Switch and play at any given time. At number 58, I had to pick Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, which is actually a gift from Captain Derpy. This game is another one of those games that can be very challenging. However, I actually have a lot more fun playing this game than any of the other aggressively hard games that I have on this list that I showed off. I'm looking at you, Cuphead, anyway. <laughs> I used to own this on the 3DS, actually, and that was thanks to my only patron at the moment, Tyler, who gifted me the game on the 3DS, and I did play it back then. And so I have this on the Switch. But either way, here's the inside. I honestly forgot it had a reversible art cover. Really nice. I kind of like that. <laughs> I might actually reverse that here. All right, so I reversed it. I'm gonna put the cartridge back in here. It's a very simple story. I don't have too much to say about it, but there is a spine, really nice. I like the fact that the text is there so you can see it from a distance. But yeah, very nice game to have. Uh, truly, you know, great. I'm truly grateful to have this. Thanks to Captain Derby, of course. At number 57, I had to pick Shantae. Shantae is really fun. And honestly, I love this version of Shantae on the Nintendo Switch. It actually contains the original Game Boy Color version as well as the enhanced Game Boy Advance version. If you guys don't know what that means, basically, if you own the original Shantae on the Game Boy Color, which is ridiculously expensive, and if you had a Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Advance SP, and played it in your Game Boy Advance, it was able to tell if it was in a better console. So the graphics themselves would be enhanced. It basically would unlock specific things that you normally wouldn't have access to on the Game Boy Color itself, which was quite interesting. So I love the fact that this contains both versions of that game on here. It also has save states, which is tremendously helpful. I'm still in the middle of playing this game, 
I never really truly experienced this game back then on the Game Boy Color. But honestly, it is a fun, weird nostalgia trip. Like a nostalgia that for a game that I've never played before. It's uh, There's a word for it. But either way. <laughs> At number 56, I have here... Luigi's Mansion 3, and yes, this is actually with a custom steelbook here. A friend of mine named Kyle, who sold me this game, said he only got the bare cartridge itself from GameStop, so it never came with a game case, so I used that as an excuse to get this really awesome custom steelbook case. I first experienced Luigi's Mansion back when the first one came out on the GameCube. I was never really like a huge, huge fan of it back then, but I did play it. And then of course, when the sequel came out on the 3DS, I was very indifferent on it. But with the third one being on the Switch, I told myself I really have to have this. I don't really have much else to say, except Luigi's Mansion 3 is actually a lot of fun. Uh, from the small amount of time I actually played it, I did play it as like a Halloween special thing on the channel, I believe. I don't remember where that is, but um, I do believe that's in a playlist that I created. So for like the Halloween special thing. Also, I don't see Polterpup anywhere. Where is Polterpup? Polterpup makes this game, ah! And number 55, I have here Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion. And I have the Steelbook Edition here. The original case is really nothing to look at because on the inside it's just all white and blank. That is why I'm using the Steelbook case here. There's a cartridge. I actually fully completed this game on my own on the Switch. And I gotta say, there are a number of things about this game that I really wish they had changed. I'm gonna start off with the positives real quick and just say that the overall experience is way better than it was back on the PSP. On the Nintendo Switch itself, it runs just fine. It runs perfectly fine, in fact. Even the pre-rendered cutscenes look really nice and beautiful. For me, I like having it on the Switch. I like having it to play it on the go. That's just me. That's why I am a Nintendo Switch focused YouTuber. Honestly, also having every single character in this game, including the random NPCs fully voiced, definitely makes this game worth playing. I love it. There's just a lot of things about the game that really aggravated me. The game is very hard at first and you need to grind a lot. I do believe the game might have a new game plus. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments but that is going to make a future playthrough of this game on the channel a lot easier because playing this game for the first time on your own can be very brutal. And of course, the necessary stealth mission was really fucking annoying. Other than that, I still recommend it for anybody who hasn't tried it out yet. But just know, you may get into this game and get frustrated with it, so... And number 54, I have here Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memories. This game is a lot better than I expected. It's actually a lot of fun. It's a rhythm game. It's honestly different than most rhythm games as it kind of shows some combat in it. So it's quite interesting. A lot of the enemies can spill out in front of you while you're playing. It can be disorienting. But honestly, like I said, for someone like me, a filthy casual, who's able to play this game to completion, anyone can play it. I highly recommend this game for anybody who loves rhythm games, who loves Kingdom Hearts games, and who loves the music. And even for those of you who don't play Kingdom Hearts, this game alone does a really good job at catching you up with the story overall. However, if you want to really, really know what's going on in greater detail, I highly recommend playing all the Kingdom Hearts games anyway. But this game on its own does a great job at a recap of the overall story. And number 53, I have here Celeste, specifically the Fan Gamer edition of Celeste. And this contains the entire DLC, basically free to download DLC with the additional story all on one cartridge and honestly i really like this version of the game i like the art style here 
I did unbox this, like I said, I unboxed most of my games on the channel. You could check out that playlist so you can watch me unbox it and go through all the contents here. I surprised myself with this game because I was able to beat the game up until like chapter eight, I want to say. So basically the main story, the main story version of this game where it reaches the first end credits after you make the cake or whatever, if you guys know what I mean. I've beaten it up until that point and now I'm in the middle of basically the chapter that is called the core. I'm in the middle of playing that right now and it's really hard. Uh, I am surprised with myself because I actually beat the game up until this point without having to use the assist mode that I did not know existed until after the, up until the middle of the core part of the game. So it is a lot of fun. It is a Metroidvania type of game. It is very hard. I have to call this the platformer hell of platformer games. All right, number 52. I have here Cult of the Lamb. Yes, I recently got this game. But yeah, Cult of the Lamb is an interesting game. This is a gift from Captain Derpy, of course. This game is a lot more fun than I expected it to be. In order to describe this game to you, it's kind of that weird mix between a roguelite, because it is a roguelite game, a Zelda game, and Animal Crossing, but with a darker, darker theme, of course, because you have a cult. It plays just like a top-down Zelda game, but if it was a roguelite game where each time you revisit the levels, they do change, there are boss fights, and your, yeah, your goal is to create a cult and lead the cult to victory and be be the top cult out of all the other cults in the game. <laughs> it's uh, it's really dark. I don't want to spoil anything. It's quite upsetting what's going on with Unity and everything and the main reason why this game is being taken down from the eShop. But I just had to have it. So thank you, Captain Derby, for sending this to me. And number 51, right above Cult of the Lamb, of course, I had to put Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is a lot of fun. If y'all don't know about Animal Crossing, I'm really not going to explain it all that much. It's it's a good game. Uh, this is one of those games that I will always pick up every now and then, like once in a while and play it for a while and then never touch it again. Uh, it's just one of those like forever games. I forever keep playing it until a newer one gets released that's even better. So I have many hours played in this game. And I mostly play nowadays with my friend Captain Derpy and even with Cammy whenever she wants to play the game as well. I mostly just clean up the island and just buy stuff and that's it. <laughs> I feel like Nintendo really needs to drop a major update on this game to give people a lot more to do. Or at the very least, there needs to be a lot more to do with the next big Animal Crossing game. Hopefully for the next generation. Okay, so... We have reached a certain point of the video where we have reached the number 50 game. So at this moment, guys, if you want to take a quick break, pause the video, go get, go grab a drink, go get yourself something to eat, use the bathroom, whatever you got to do, and then come back. Uh, if you don't feel free to take a break if you'd like. I know this video is going to be very, very long when I eventually get around to editing it and cutting off a lot of excess content. But I'm just giving you this time and chance as a reminder. Take a break, get a drink, get something to eat, use the bathroom, and then come back. That being said, I have here at number 50, I picked Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Yes, and this is a custom slipcover case for the game. If you don't know what if you don't know anything about this, I made a video with a multi unboxings of madness that will be in the description hopefully in that playlist where i unbox different things there is a guy on etsy who makes these i'll try to leave a link in the description so you check out his stuff and of course there's the inside with the game itself i actually went out of my way to get every single xenoblade chronicles game on the nintendo switch and I made it my goal to actually play every single one of them uh, back to back. And I definitely got Xenoblade Burnout, I will say that. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has to be probably my least favorite Xenoblade Chronicles game out of all of them. There's just 
too much fan service in this game. Uh, it, it's trying too hard to appeal to the fan service, like showing off, you know, anime titties and feet and shit. I'm not even kidding when I say this. And um, it's trying really hard to be an anime while failing at it and being very cringe at many moments. It does have a, it does have things about it that I do really like. Uh, the music's great. The story's good. There's just some characters like Mithra that I really do not like at all. The main character at first I didn't like him, but I've grown to appreciate him over time. Realizing he's just a kid, just with a deeper voice, of course. So people automatically write him off as like this young adult who complains. But it's like, no, he's actually a kid at this time in the story. There's just too many times that I've gotten lost in this game unnecessarily. And the game would po the game would point me in a specific direction, but would be bad at doing so. And I had to look up YouTube videos in order to help me actually complete this game and get to certain points that I couldn't find. It's still quite enjoyable for the most part. I do like the characters. I do like the music. Like I said, the story's pretty decent. And the fact that it has a new game plus, honestly, makes me want to play it again. So maybe someday on the channel when I eventually get around to playing all the games. Speaking of Xenoblade, we have more Xenoblade here with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torn of the Golden Country. Basically what this is, is a physical edition of the DLC that came out for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It is a backstory, it is a prequel to the game, I believe takes place a hundred years prior to Xenoblade Chronicles 2 story. And honestly, it's a 30 plus hour adventure and I really do like it. Yeah, I have the Japanese version here, which is really nice. Um, if you ever buy this brand new, regardless of region, whether it's the US version, European or Japanese version, it comes with a download code that comes with additional content, a DLC for the main Xenoblade Chronicles 2 game itself, not the DLC here. I like it more than Xenoblade Chronicles 2 just because it's shorter. The music is way more phenomenal. I love the music way more than the sequel. And the overall combat is better, in my honest opinion. The story is more impactful. The only issues I have with it, of course, are the mandatory side quests, which I really do not like at all. But other than that, I really overall had a better experience with this than Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And number 48 I have here right above those two Xenoblade games is Nier Automata, the end of Yorha edition. This of course is the reverse art. I reversed it. It looks very nice. There's the inside with the original cover and the boring looking cartridge. Good job, Square Enix. Anyway, this game I had mixed feelings about at first. It starts off in a very weird way. There are multiple ways to play this game, multiple different types of combat and gameplays in this game. It's very interesting, but the more you play it, the more it makes sense and the more you get used to it. But this game is a lot better than I expected. I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't picked it up yet. It runs really well on the Switch. It's got an interesting, dark story, full of mysteries, and I love it so far. Alrighty, so at number 47, right above Nier Automata. And uh, weirdly enough, I had to put Hypnospace Outlaw. I kind of weirdly enjoy this game just a little bit more than Nier Automata because it's a lot easier to pick up and play at any given time. I can't really call this a game game, but it's like a point and click adventure. It's a lot of fun. I can't give this game enough praise. I'm not gonna show too much of the contents here as I have actually unboxed this game twice on the channel. Once for Dan, because it was his copy and once for myself, but I'll at least take this out so you can see the inside. Hypnospace Outlaw is one of those games, and I mentioned this before, that you can play a point and click adventure. It feels like an operating system from like the 90s, almost like Windows 98. However, it's its own thing. It's, yeah, it's a game, but it also feels like an operating system where 
you can change the wallpaper in the game. You can move around icons and save it exactly as it is. You can accidentally download fictional viruses that'll mess with your system, but don't worry, it's not a real virus. And yeah, it's got a like a fictional community in the game. You're basically a net cop. You're going online trying to stop uh, plagiarism, trying to stop different things, uh, including bullying and just a number of things. You can gain the fictional revenue to buy yourself some stuff, including actual music within the game you can listen to. It's it's a weird game. I will say that it's very bizarre, but pick it up. It's still on Fan Gamer. Okay, number forty-five. I had to pick Haven. Haven's actually a lot of fun. Uh, however, there are some things about it that are floating around on the internet about this game that that I simply do not agree with. Most importantly and most notable is people saying that it's a lot like Breath of the Wild, and I gotta say it is absolutely nothing like Breath of the Wild. This game is vastly different than Breath of the Wild. It's got like some art style that looks very similar to Breath of the Wild, but that's it. There's no true open world or open air to this game. It's made by these people called the Game Bakers. It's a lot of fun. It's an interesting game. My honest opinion about this game is that it takes a while to get into. And with this game being only up to 10 hours long, possibly more if you're wasting a lot of time or wanting to 100% the game, I gotta say that like it takes a bit too long for such a short game to finally get to a point where you're able to craft the right items to finally make yourself some medicine to heal yourself. It honestly takes a lot longer than I like to say, and it takes especially a lot longer too before you're eventually able to fast travel. Now, if this game was a lot longer at 30 plus hours, then my opinions on that would, would change. But for such a short game, honestly, it takes a bit too long before it starts actually getting really good. But like I said, it's not a 100% open world or open air game at all. They are just tiny little sandboxes that you visit. There's not a whole lot to look at. Um, there are moments, of course, that it feels a little dissociative, especially when you're in your little hub area, which is like your little home. You kind of see the characters just lounging around while you yourself are like this weird entity just walking around and viewing everything, just observing. It's, it's very strange. And there's really not a final boss fight at all in this game, if you can believe that which is quite disappointing. But other than that, it's not bad. Okay, so number 45, right above Haven, I picked the game we're actually currently live streaming on the channel at the time I am recording this, of course, is Kirby in the Forgotten Land. It's slightly above Haven. I do really like this game. I still have yet to beat it. I'm still trying to play it all the way through on the channel. I did hear that, that the game shifts eventually later on and becomes a little more serious. So far, I'm actually enjoying the game. I'm having a lot more fun with it than I expected. The game is very, very stupid easy. The levels are very linear, so as you progress, you kind of can't really go backwards. I kind of wish this was more like Mario Odyssey, where it actually had full, explorable sandbox worlds. But other than that, it's not bad. I really do like this game, and I do have fun playing on, playing on the channel, so... Here's the inside, of course. Very simple. Yeah, I won't lie. This is a game I've always wanted anyway. Specifically, I would really love to see an open world Kirby game or at least a sandbox one. But all in all, this is definitely a game worth picking up. It is very bizarre because of obvious reasons with these weird transformations that Kirby takes upon himself. It's goofy. It's wacky. I, I don't know. It's a Kirby game. Can't really say much else. If you made it up until this point of the video, which I think this would probably be a good halfway point here, um, go ahead and leave me a green heart emoji in the comments. So next up should be number 43, which of course is Demon Slayer, the Hinokami Chronicles. Uh, this game runs really, really well on the Nintendo Switch. It looks beautiful especially on the OLED screen, which I do have the OLED Nintendo Switch. And especially if you have an OLED TV, it's gonna look amazing on the big screen as well. This, of course, 
came with a special code that I already used. But this code basically came with the Academy versions of Tanjiro and other characters, which was exclusive to the Switch version. Runs really, really well, honestly, at a really nice 30 frames per second. Of course, it has Adventure Mode, which is one of my favorite things of this game. Unfortunately, it only goes up to the end of the Mugen arc. However, the Entertainment District arc characters are available as DLC characters in this game. So the reason why this game is sentimental to me is because I actually got this game right around when I caught that little kitty cat virus, you know, the, 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 the C virus, the cat virus. I won't say exactly what it is on camera here, but you know what I mean. And when this game came out and eventually I got it and I played the crap out of this game while I was stuck at home. At the time I didn't have as much Switch games as I do now. So yeah, this game will always hold a special place in my heart. Next game at number 42, right above Demon Slayer. I had to pick River City Girls 1 and 2 Dual Pack. I really love River City Girls. This is a really simple story. It's a beat em up game. And the whole point of the story is that you're playing as these two girls. Apparently they had their boyfriends kidnapped and your goal is to find their boyfriends and just wreak havoc on the city and uh, beat up whoever basically kidnapped your boyfriends and work together to save the city and it's a lot of fun. I don't know. I, I really love the music. I like the story. It's very simple. It's got full voice acting which you don't really see a lot nowadays with like games like this in my opinion. Here's the inside itself. Looks really really nice. There's a cartridge. And honestly, you can get this on Play Asia for a lot cheaper than you could get the very first game by itself through Limited Run, which is quite interesting. Next up at number 42, I put Destroy All Humans in number 42 slot. So, yeah, I grew up with this game. I played every single Destroy All Humans game on the PS2. So, and honestly, it runs really fine. It runs really, really well on the Switch. Uh, the only thing I noticed is that the pre-rendered cutscenes that look really, really good, and there are only like a few of those, um, they do have some hiccups. But as far as like the main game itself, like the actual gameplay and regular cutscenes, everything runs perfectly fine, all smooth, especially with the many chaotic things to happen on screen all at once surprisingly of course here is the inside but there's really not much to look at it is a fun and silly game honestly like i gotta say it's definitely worth picking up like if you if you love just old-fashioned ps2 meat-headed type of games and you want to just destroy a bunch of stuff and actually have missions to do it's a lot of fun Alrighty. We are now at number 41, and that right there is Stardew Valley. Just to give you an idea of what Stardew Valley is about, it is more than just a farming simulator. It contains a lot more than you think. You're able to not only farm, you're able to get your own house together. You can actually do fishing as well as dungeon crawling and actually fighting enemies and even dating people and marrying people. So yeah, you can actually also play this online with your friends up to four players. It doesn't say back here, but I promise you, you can actually create your own farm and host a farm and have other people who have the same game jump into your farm up to three additional people. So four people can actually play all together at once and you each can have your own individual house and split up the work. One of you can work on the farm, the other one can work on fishing, the other one can work on the dungeon, or possibly even two of you work on the dungeon. So it's it's a lot of fun. And the more people you play with this, it's even better. All right, guys, so at number 39, I have here the Mega Man Zero and ZX Legacy Collection. This is an amazing thing to have for any collector in my opinion um, the only reason why it's not higher in the list is because these games can be kind of brutal this particular collection of course 
gives you many options such as save states as well as an easier mode so it actually becomes easier to play but even with the easier mode and save states these games can still be pretty tough to get through in my opinion here's the inside of course there's nothing at all but uh, yeah, like I said, if you really like darker Mega Man stories and heavy text on that, this is definitely the way to go. This is such an amazing collection. I can't wait to play this someday on the channel. Possibly just on my own as a solo plays. Because it is a lot of text to get through and it can't, like I said, it can get very repetitive. It's something that will always remain in my collection. At number 38, right above Mega Man, the ZX collection there, I have Pokemon Violet. Of course, this is an alternative art cover thingy here, uh, made by Attainable Arts. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check out his page on Etsy. You can buy directly from him. Here's the cartridge itself. Pokemon Violet actually felt a lot more fun for me than Pokemon Sword and Shield did. However, this game was very, very broken when I first played this game. Of course, since then, they have patched the crap out of this game and made it more playable. Uh, I just, I, the cartridge itself, in my opinion, actually, the cartridge itself is still in a broken state. It doesn't matter how many times they patch this game, the bare game itself on the cartridge is not future-proof. So I just, I hope someday this will have a better revised cartridge that will be fully patched out uh, with little to no issues. I still had a lot of fun with this game. Way more fun than I did with Sword and Shield anyway. So I highly recommend it for anybody who is skeptical on getting back into Pokemon. And number 37 I have here Bomb Chicken. Yes. Bomb Chicken. Bomb Chicken is a very simple game. I've talked about this before on the channel. Not much really to say about this game except it's very simple. It's goofy. You, you play as a freaking chicken that lays bombs, I'm not even kidding, and you can use those to tower yourself up and do crazy platforming and use them to solve puzzles and defeat many enemies. Yes, it is a lot of fun. It's aggravating. You can die in one hit, and they do limit you on your... on the amount of times you can die, so... Here's the cartridge itself. There's the inside, of course, the booklet. You can check out my unboxing videos in the playlist that I'll leave down below. And that is one of them, I believe. So yeah, number 37 I have here, which is Tunic. Tunic is a really good, fun game, but it's also extremely brutal, extremely freaking hard. In my honest opinion, at, le at least for a filthy casual like me, it's very, very hard. Um, I know a lot of people out there are going to be like, Oh, what are you talking about? This game's not hard at all, or whatever. It's like, I understand I, th that you have your opinions. To me, this game was pretty tough. Uh, of course, I got this with a special box that was like a holographic box that came with like the instruction manual that contains a lot of spoilers in it. So you're really not supposed to look at it unless you play the game for the first time. Of course, on the inside, it comes with a reversible art cover, controls and concepts, which is really nice. Really nice looking poster, which I'm not going to show off because it shows off spoilers for the game. Some stickers here, I believe, and the cartridge itself. I'm going to take this out so you can see the goofy face of, of that atrocity right there that we don't need to show the world that, but he's a special boy anyway. Tunic's a great game for those who love top-down Zelda games and love the original hard challenges and uh, I gotta say it's worth having if you don't own Tunic you definitely need to try it out it is pretty hard okay next up in number 36 we have the cruel king and the great hero I have the storybook edition of this of course I unbox it on the channel playlist is in the description I'll keep mentioning that forever until the end of time or the end of these videos here's the cartridge I mentioned this game before. If you love Paper Mario or even 
the liar princess and the prince i think i i don't remember it, it had something to do with the liar princess and something prince i forgot the full title i'll put the image up here if you like that type of game and you like paper mario aesthetics you will love this game this game is cute it's adorable oh my god i cannot recommend this game enough i haven't played it all the way through but i gotta say i really really love this game so far it's got good music it's pretty decent combat and i i don't want to spoil much about it but it's it's really good and number 35 on the list i had to pick tears of the kingdom the legend of zelda basically the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom i have the steelbook case here for it i don't have the full special edition or anything like that but i do have the game I have poured in about 70 plus hours into the game and I beat the main story. The only reason why this is not in a higher position is because I didn't have as much fun with this game as I did with Breath of the Wild or any of the other Zelda games that I have. Uh, for many reasons, I just, I felt like it was just a little weird. This felt more like a Zelda forward slash like PUBG type game. I don't know how to explain it. Like you're able to craft and do a bunch of weird stuff that I honestly just felt weird about. It was a good game. It's honestly supposedly supposed to be better than Breath of the Wild. But I feel like because Breath of the Wild is simpler than this game, I enjoy it a bit more than this game. It's, it's a little weird. That's just how I feel about it. And I know what you guys are thinking. What in the world is that? This whole Pathfinder handbook thing. I'm not really going to show it off too much. But uh, you got uh, MBP UK Rowan to thank for these instruction booklets. He basically makes uh, custom ones. You can check out his Etsy page down below, as well as his website. I'll try to leave a link to both of them. If you want to show full support to him and he gets all the money, definitely go directly to his website. Like I said, links will be in the description. Tears of the Kingdom, I don't know. It just It felt a little dry to me compared to Breath of the Wild. There were, there were just a lot of things that they didn't focus on at all. From breath of the wild it's like a lot of stuff from breath of the wild got uh were basically forgotten and i just i'm a little frustrated with that so of course at number 34 right above tears of the kingdom i placed breath of the wild i really had a lot of fun with this game this was one of the first open world or open air games that came out for zelda it was one of the because most Zelda games were based off of Ocarina of Time and how that game was laid out. This was the first of its kind to basically introduce an open world or open air type of game. And I really love it. Like this game, I could play again and again in the future. I am more than likely to play this game again than Tears of the Kingdom right away. That's just me. But here's the inside, of course. Oh, oh, surprise, surprise. We got more instruction manual booklet thingies from uh from rowan himself Ooh, it's more product placement anyway check out that stuff in the description oh bigger surprise what is this oh it's the zelda breath of the wild plus expansion pass yep that's exactly what it is it's all on one cartridge and i was lucky enough to get this on play asia when it first came out on there and w when it was first released on play asia so this is definitely a highly valuable item here. I will always hold on to this. I held on to the original cover that I had from the previous Breath of the Wild copy and I kind of just got rid of the cartridge on its own by trading it away for credit. Because honestly, I just wanted this out here. I really like this original cover. So it kind of throws people off, but yeah, I really love Breath of the Wild. It's a good game. I highly recommend it for those who haven't played it yet. You will be able to pour many, many hours into this game and with the added DLC, a crazy amount of additional hours. So there is Breath of the Wild. Next up, we got number 33 at Link's Awakening. I really love Link's Awakening. This game's a lot of fun. And honestly, on the Switch, I had very little complaints the only complaint i had was that the overworld itself lagged a bit 
but when you actually played the game itself and got into dungeons, it ran just fine. I haven't played it since then when I was playing it back then, so maybe since then it has gotten a patch. For those of you who love the original Link's Awakening, this is for you. You definitely need to try it out. Oh, here we go. Another one. <laughs> Hashtag, oh, 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 product placement. I swear, this man is everywhere. I freaking blink. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show it off. Why not? There's his uh, website there, of course. You can check him out on Etsy. Pause that, read it for yourself. I decided to keep that, which is kind of funny. But he just keeps showing up in every single one of them. I really love this guy's work. Rowan is such a great guy, and you definitely need to check him out. I can't really say much else except it's just a fun game. And I really love the art style. I love how it looks like a clay type of world. And honestly, I really want to see Oracle of Ages and Seasons in the future with the same style. Probably, possibly the same engine, maybe similar, if not a better engine. They just need to optimize it better for the Switch, in my opinion, because it does have some overworld issues, at least from the last time I played this years ago. But yep, there is Link's Awakening. I highly recommend it if you still haven't gotten it yet. Next up at number 32, just right above Link's Awakening, I had to pick Skyward Sword. Uh, originally, Skyward Sword was known as the one of the worst Zelda games back then on the Wii because of the horrendous controls. I gotta tell you guys, this version on the Nintendo Switch is vastly superior in every way. And I gotta say, I really love this game. I was actually able to play this game to full completion on the Switch, and I had a blast with it. There are two different ways, of course, to play it. You can play it with the Joy-Cons and use motion controls, which are actually not bad at all. Compared to the Wii, they are way better. And there's also my favorite mode to play the game, which is button mode. It is a little weird though, because you do use your right thumbstick to control the sword. And I believe you press and hold R or Z, or I think I think it's ZL or, or L, I don't remember. One of the trigger buttons, you press and hold that and you're able to actually use the right thumbstick as a camera temporarily. You let go of the button and then you use it as a sword it's actually not bad at all here of course is the game itself front and back inside of course i really like this game it's a lot of fun oh here we go another booklet from rowan i swear i got a lot of them from this guy like i said all this stuff was made by one guy you gotta check him out product placements anyway <laughs> here's the cartridge itself this is actually the story where demise apparently rises and that's the beginning of that uh, whole demon king thing or whatever so it's 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 like the origins of that evil starting so it's a really good story it's quite interesting it's a little weird though because your master sword uh is some sort of girl creature alien thing and has a will of its own but it's the only game that's like that so you guys have to give this a try if you haven't given it a try yet and you've been skeptical get it on the switch okay so number 31 i want to say yeah 31 i picked super mario odyssey for the number 31 slot here i really love this game honestly i really like the fact that the levels are these big playground type sandbox levels and there's plenty of areas to explore and honestly i really like it here's the inside of course and there's the cartridge this is a fun game surprisingly a lot better than i expected i do look forward to playing it again in the future and apparently it's got a post game that looks a lot like mario 64 but i'm not going to say much else because i would probably spoil some things but yeah if you haven't played mario odyssey yet you will like it especially if you like typical older Mario games like Mario 64 and even Mario Sunshine. This is definitely on par with those games in my opinion. Nowhere near as amazing as those games because, I don't know, that's my nostalgia goggles on. But it's still a really good game. I highly recommend it for anybody who hasn't tried it yet. And at number 30, right above that Mario game, speaking of Mario, I have Super Mario Sunshine for the Nintendo Switch. What? What? Um. Anyway. I'm kidding, guys. This is another one of those custom Switch game cases that I got printed by Attainable Arts. Uh, I actually found this on, I want to say, on Reddit somewhere. I don't remember exactly where, 
I kind of made some edit to it myself because it only said Super Mario Sunshine. So I added the additional text that says Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I sent the image to the guy and he said he would print it for me. Either way, on the inside, of course, you see the reverse art and more instruction manuals from Rowan himself. I really, really love this one. This is actually probably one of my favorite ones. I'll show it really quick, but yeah, each section covers each individual game, even down to like Mario Galaxy, which is my least favorite of the three, but I still really like Mario Galaxy. Of course, there's the cartridge. Um, I really like it. Some people don't like this because of the fact that this was a lazy port. Honestly, if you can even call it a port, there has been proof that Mario Sunshine on here is the emulated version, so that's kind of sad. And you only get three games instead of having more, which honestly, there was Galaxy 1 and 2, but we only got Galaxy 1 on here. Like, or what is this whackness? It's ridiculous. But either way, I'm happy to have it. I will always keep it as a part of my collection. I have great nostalgia for Mario 64. I grew up with that and the N64 with my dad. Used to play that all the time, Mario Sunshine, especially when I got the GameCube in the early 2000s. I played the absolute crap out of that game. And then, of course, Mario Galaxy, I eventually borrowed that game, including the, its sequel, many, many years later in my high school days uh, from an old friend of mine who lent them to me. And I had fun with those as well. So, but yeah, I recommend getting Mario 3D All Stars physically if you could find it for a decent price from somebody. You can't even get it on the eShop anymore. That kind of sucks. And number 29 we have here, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. This right here is specifically the Best Buy edition, which surprisingly is actually going for more than the original one that first came out through limited run. So I'm quite happy to have this and I kind of like the cover just a little more. It's just a little uh, more boring looking in a way, but I, I don't know. I, I'm okay with it. Of course, it comes with an instruction manual on the inside. I do believe I did an unboxing video of this a long time ago. I don't remember if I did or not. I'll quickly show the booklet because it's really, really freaking small. There's not a whole lot in here. Literally, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's just it. You could reverse it if you want to. I don't like the reverse art all that much. I, I don't know. I mean, I could reverse it. I, you know what? Let's just reverse it. I mean... I mean, yeah, reversed, it doesn't look so bad. It does show off a different spine, I guess, so from a distance, it doesn't look terrible. I don't know. The more I look at it now, it actually kind of looks dope. <laughs> I might actually leave it like this. Who knows? But yeah, there's Samurai Jack at number 29. I know some people, like my friend Captain Derpy, said he didn't like this game because of the fact that you have a katana that never breaks. So he offers the question, like, why even introduce weapons that break in the game in the first place? Uh, in my honest opinion, I kind of like the way things are in this game. Because being honest, when you start off with a katana, it's not as powerful as you would think. And you do get some temporary weapons, like weapons that do break early in the game. But these weapons are by default usually better and more powerful than your katana is. So I found myself using every single weapon that I ever got, and I thoroughly enjoyed this game. All right, next up, number 28, we have here Shantae, Half Genie Hero Ultimate Edition. This game's a lot of fun. Uh, this is probably one of the Shantae games that got me into the series. It has full voice acting, very colorful. The boss fights are actually quite epic and really cool to look at. It's got multiple different like versions of the game. And I really, really love this game. So if you like a side-scrolling type of game where you can transform into different, like, creatures and battle your way to victory, I highly recommend this game. And most other Shantae games are really expensive nowadays. This is one of those that you can still probably pick up for pretty cheap. I highly recommend it. Once again, this is at number 28, I want to say, for Shantae Half Genie Hero. Number 27. I have here Metroid Prime Remastered. I actually was introduced to Metroid Prime uh, back then on the GameCube by a friend of mine who I used to go visit all the time during high school where we used to play GameCube games. 
and they used to play Metroid Prime all the time, and if it wasn't for them, I would have never actually considered getting into the game back then. I never actually got past the first game at that time because it was pretty hard. I'm still currently playing it right now on the Nintendo Switch and find I come to find out many years later that it has an assist mode, <laughs> which uh, is actually rather helpful. But yep, that's the reversible art cover, of course. You already saw it there. I don't like the original cover, but apparently, fun fact, US version looks exactly like this on the outside. And of course, reversible art cover looks like this. I highly recommend Metroid Prime Remastered, especially if you love Metroid games. I gotta say, it is a huge improvement to the original. It's graphically better. It looks way better. It plays amazingly. So, yeah, I've had no hiccups. I have no problems with this game. You need to pick this up before it becomes hard to find. I will say that. Next up at number 26, of course, right above Metroid Prime, I had to place Metroid Dread right above the game. Now, I know some of my friends and longtime viewers are probably going to be like, Sojourn, I thought it would be the opposite. I thought it would be Metroid Prime. Actually, no. Surprisingly, um, I find Metroid Dread to be easier to play and easier to get through than Metroid Prime. So with that being said, I actually have more fun and had more fun with Metroid Dread than I am with Prime. Don't get me wrong, I... I am enjoying Metroid Prime, but I'm actually a little more frustrated with it than I ever was with Metroid Dread. I got through Dread just fine. Prime I'm having a little difficulties with, but I'm still enjoying it. It's honestly a lot of fun. I found myself having a lot more fun with this game than I expected. It's got like a very eerie atmosphere. It's very atmospheric and uh, gives you that feeling of isolation. It's... It's really, really good. I love this game. Okay, so number 25, I had to pick Persona 5 Royal Edition. Of course, I have the Steelbook Edition here. Looks really good. Of course, the back has all that stuff there. I really like the gold on the edge there. And, of course, the cardboard box that went around it. Very nice. But, yeah, Persona 5 Royal it's definitely something I am grateful to have because honestly, I've been debating off and on whether I wanted to get into Persona for many years every time it would come to new consoles. Once it finally came over to the Nintendo Switch as a Royal Edition with all the DLC, I had to get it. And honestly, I'm having a lot of fun with it, more than I thought I would. And this is one of those games that definitely requires a full commitment to. Because on average, I believe online it said you're going to be spending about 110 plus hours on this game first time around. And with my progress right now, I'm probably going to spend over 130 plus hours on this game. More than 130 hours, I guarantee, by the time I finish it. I'm taking my sweet time with this game. I can only describe it as a weird, uh, like, high school simulator JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I highly recommend it, though. It's, it's a lot of fun. Okay, and number 24. I had to put Turn a Boy Commits Tax Evasion. Yes, right above Persona. Sue me, okay? <laughs> Turn a Boy Commits Tax Evasion is such a silly goofy ass game this game literally is only about like three hours long i'm not even kidding but man are those eventful three hours the game starts off in a way that makes you feel like oh yep this just this, this is exactly what it is the title he commits tax evasion oh he's got taxes to pay nope rip up the pages and then apparently you become the slave of the mayor and he makes you do a bunch of stuff and then realize he's the bad guy. And you gotta fight him at the end and then realize, oh wait a minute, that the final boss was like, it was okay. And then you realize, oh, game tells you if you if you rip all of the tax forms in the game, you unlock the true final boss. I went back and did that and it was like some Kingdom Hearts level of bullshit, I'm not even kidding. I love the music from this game, I love how dark it gets real fast. And the true final boss fight 
made up for it. Ah, I love this game so much. This was a gift from Captain Derpy. Thank you so much, Captain Derpy, once again. I am super happy to have this game. It's very goofy. I'm actually looking forward to Turn Up Boy Robs a Bank. I'm not even kidding. That is a title that it's going to be a sequel that is guaranteed coming to the Switch. I can't wait to get that. Number 23, right above Turn Up Boy, I had to pick... The Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe, another gift from Captain Derpy, really happy to have it. This is the reverse side cover, I really like it because it shows James himself. I hope to someday meet him in person so he can sign the blank part of his white shirt there for me. That would be nice. But here's the other side, the normal side you normally see, it's from Limited Run. The game is fully complete on cartridge, really nice. It's silly, it's goofy, if you know everything about Angry Video Game Nerd and know all about the different episodes he's made over the years, there's so much in this game, it's like a huge love letter and send off to James Rolfe himself and his character as the Angry Video Game Nerd. Not much else I can say, but it's highly inappropriate, it is really really fun, I'm so happy to have this. Number 22, right above Angry Video Game Nerd, I had put Cat Lateral Damage re -meowstered. This game's a lot of fun. I remember playing this game for the first time back on Steam when it was first a thing. I went on and on about this game when I unboxed it and I went on and on about it, especially in my top 10 sleeper hits video. If you need to check those videos out, here of course is the art book itself. It's just a bunch of picture of cats. I've already shown this before. Really nice, I still love that. Of course, it is fully complete on cartridge with all DLCs available for this game. If you're a cat lover, and if you had cats in the past, and, you know, they, they've they been a part of your life for a long time, and, you know, they have since passed, and you still have cats even now, too. Like, this, is, this is just such a love letter to cat owners everywhere, in my honest opinion. And if you just like silly, goofy fun, you want to play as a cat and destroy a bunch of crap and actually have goals and being able to unlock other cats and other stages look no further than this game this game's just a bunch of silly fun number 21 right above cat lateral damage we are getting into the territory of more metroidvania type games i have here hollow knights with a special custom uh cover here that i got online from uh, this person called Quadriel Art. You can find them on Etsy. As of right now, when I'm recording this, they don't have anything listed other than this one, I think. And this is really, really nice. This is something that they made custom themselves. Really, really cool. Of course, I <laughs> reversed the original one here, which of course... You can tell from the back here with this particular image that this is the revised cartridge that has the entire DLC all on the cartridge. Just based off of this image alone, you see that image on the back of your Hollow Knight game. That means that it has the entire DLC. But yeah, the Quadril art cover came with these custom alternative stickers, I guess you can put the sticker labels that you can put on your game itself if for any reason you wanted to do that. I personally will not be doing that unless it gets damaged. So it's really nice to have that. I'm not going to show off all this here. Of course, you could check out my unboxing video. I believe uh, the Quadro art thing had like some additional art there. So I'll show it off here. And this is one of those Metroidvania games that I really love. I'm like super excited for this game. I started playing it on my channel as a casual live stream, which is my Sojin's casual gaming lounge series on the channel, where I literally just play games that I'm not fully committed to completing on the channel. I just play whatever I feel like playing at that time. And I may or may not revisit certain games. It just really depends. But I gotta say, I really love Hollow Knight. Like it holds a special place in my heart. I really love the story. It's very simple. The music is nice, just everything about it's just really cool. I can't recommend it enough. Okay, so we have exactly 20 games left here. So number 20, right above Hollow Knight, a game that I consider better than Hollow Knight. 
would definitely be Ender Lilies. Ender Lilies is another Metroidvania game, and it's actually one of those Metroidvania games that you can level up in, and it has a pretty heavy story. Uh, a lot of lot of text to read through. Here's the cartridge in the inside, of course. You basically play as this priestess, and you have these uh, souls that assist you. So each enemy and each boss, actually each boss fight that you complete, you can choose to have mercy on them and pray for them, and they become an assist soul by assisting you, um, by providing you their power. So it's really cool. That's how you gain power-ups. Of course, like I said, you can level up the normal way. It's a lot, a lot of fun. I can't recommend Ender Lilies enough. All right, at number 19, right above Ender Lilies, I had to actually pick something that surprised myself is Bayonetta, Ceriza, and the Lost Demon. This game surprised me as to how much I actually really liked it. I'm not going to even lie. I'm still in the middle of playing it, of course. I haven't fully completed the game just yet. The game reminds me a little bit of Okami, with like similar to the art style, but not exactly one for one. It's got that cell shading type of art style. It's quite interesting because you control two characters. You control Bayonetta with the left side of the controller, with the left thumbstick, D-pad I believe, and the trigger buttons, L and ZL. And then the right side of the controller with the face buttons, including the thumbstick and R and ZR control Cheshire, which is really quite interesting. It's hard to explain, but it's very unique. And honestly, someone like me who has played all the Bayonetta games, which I'm not a huge fan of them, which is why I no longer have them, uh, I gotta say this game is vastly different and way better than the actual Bayonetta games themselves. And I have to agree with a statement I saw online when I actually saw a comment on a video on YouTube about Bayonetta, where someone actually said, this game is better experienced if you never played the original Bayonetta games at all. He's absolutely right. And honestly, it doesn't make much of a difference even if you played the other, ba even if you played the other Bayonetta games, I still recommend it. It's a standalone game. I'm loving it so far. So, yeah, that's why it's so high up in the list. And number 18, I had to pick Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, only because I have nostalgia for Gen 1 Pokemon. I grew up with Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, and Forward, and I poured many hours into those older games. Uh, minus the whole Pokemon Go version of this, which I'm kind of indifferent on the Go part of the game. Had to do a little editing there. I forgot I actually left the receipt in there from a long time ago. I actually bought this from a Walmart. Quite interesting. But anyway, there's the cartridge. I chose to get Pokemon Let's Go Eevee because I felt like it was the le he was the least popular one compared to the two. And I'm like, eh, Pikachu's overrated. And I wanted to get Eevee, so that's why I have this one. And it's a lot of fun. It's very simple. And catching Pokemon is definitely vastly different and in a way some actually a little easier to catch the Pokemon and and sometimes even harder depending um, compared to the original ways of catching Pokemon and honestly I like the style I kind of like it for this for this particular game it's a lot of fun it's visually pleasing and I look forward to playing this someday on the channel. To number 17, right above Pokemon, I had to pick the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. Uh, main reason why I got this collection in the first place and why it's above Pokemon Let's Go Eevee is just pure nostalgia. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Mainly with Super Castlevania 4. Yes, I got this collection mostly just for that game. And of course, secondary Bloodlines, because Bloodlines is also really freaking good. But either way, Super Castlevania 4 is the earliest memory I had with any type of Castlevania game. Way back when I was a child and played this on the Super Nintendo, I never got that far because it was really hard. And I actually played this and beat it uh, on the Nintendo Switch when I first finally got it from Limited Run. I was really happy to finally revisit a childhood game and actually beat it. Of course, I know they had a different version that came out uh that was best buy exclusive but honestly 
I like this cover just a bit more. So with that being said, Castlevania Anniversary Collection will remain in my collection until further notice. I, I, I can't really say much else about it. Uh, the music's just phenomenal in Super Castlevania 4 specifically. And I, I just like the fact that you can do whatever you want with the whip. It's awesome. <laughs> anyway. And number 16, I had to pick Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol Dual Pack. Yes. All on the same icon, all in the same menu. Same thing with nostalgia. I gotta say, this game is more nostalgic for me than Castlevania is. Only because I used to play this a lot with my dad growing up as a child. Early days of Super Nintendo. We played the absolute crap out of this game. Honestly, as soon as I heard that it came to the Switch, I was really, really happy to hear that. I'm not going to take all this out, but of course, the this is the Steelbook Edition, which I have the Big Box Edition. I'm not going to show off the box. And it's all in 3D, which you can use these original 3D classes to view it all, including the art gallery book there. I have two different unboxings of this game, one with a bare game itself and what you see here uh, with the original case not the steelbook case and of course the big box unboxing as well really really nice i love it and uh my only issue with the game of course is the controls the controls are not that great and they are not mapped correctly and i'm quite aggravated that there is no fix for it that you cannot remap the controls themselves the only way to properly do that is to get yourself like an 8-bit do controller or 8-bit do and remap that on your computer to match the original controls. It's a little weird, but it is plausible. Either way, I love this game. That is why it's higher up in the list. And number 15 right above Zombies Ate My Neighbors is a gift from my friend Captain Derpy. I have much to say about this, but I will try to keep it brief. And that is Webbed. I freaking love Webbed. Webbed is such a cute freaking game. Oh my gosh. I only can describe it as you play as a cute spider. Your uh, spider boyfriend gets kidnapped by a bird. You basically have to work with ants and different other animals to create some sort of device to help you get to that bird and rescue your spider boyfriend and of course here's the cartridge itself it's a three hour adventure very simple you could possibly even beat it in two hours if you really know what you're doing and for some reason of course because this is a super rare game it's expensive i'm super happy to have webbed it's very cute uh basically platforming you use your webs in a very unique way to solve puzzles it's a very cute game. I highly recommend checking out Webbed if you haven't already. And number 14 right above Webbed, of course, it would be kind of dumb if Webbed was above this one, but I'm, I'm just saying. Rain Code, yes. Master Detective Archives Rain Code. I really freaking love this game. I, of course, have the Steelbook case here that came with the Mysteriful uh, box set that came with the plushie and soundtrack. I did an unboxing video of that, of course, too. You can check that out in the playlist. All my unboxings are in that playlist. Raincoat is a lot of fun. If you if you love Danganronpa and you also like the style of Persona, you will really like this game. It's really good. Uh, the story's good. Um, there are some issues with it where there's a lot of like unnecessarily annoying mini games that are required to complete to get to the game. And also your health bar doesn't make any sense because the game's stupid easy. But I gotta say, the story itself keeps you engaged. I really wanted to play it to completion because I was intrigued by each mystery. And it just got crazier and crazier. And I love the music. I love the story. I love the characters. It's just, there's some characters I don't like, but either way, it's just, it's such a good game. Speaking of detective type games at number 13, right above it, I have to pick Ghost Trick because Ghost Trick, honestly in my opinion, is way better than Rain Code. I love the story. I love the gameplay. It's very simple. And honestly, it plays really well on the, on the Switch. I had to get it physically. Of course, that code has already been redeemed, so don't even try to take it. 
but uh, here's the cartridge. That code really honestly only gives you some borders since it has like a square like aspect ratio for it on the screen since it was originally a DS game. All in all, I highly recommend Ghost Trick for those of you who really like puzzle games and like mysteries. 12 games remaining and number 12 we have Little Witch No Beta. Of course I have the Steelbook Edition here. Really nice. I think I talked a bit about that uh, when I was showing that off in one of my other videos. I think it was the Sleeper Hits videos, I don't remember. But either way, Little Witch No Beta is a really fun game. If you like 3D platforming and 3D type of Metroidvania game, look no further than this. It's really fun. You are basically in a dungeon castle that has a really good level up system and you're able to fight a bunch of enemies and it's pretty straightforward. It's you get to play as this little witch and use your staff to beat up your enemies and also use it almost like a gun. <laughs> but it's like magic. It's really cool. And the story gets really deep real fast and gets crazy. Almost Kingdom Hearts level. I'm not even kidding. And music's phenomenal. It has a new game plus. I can't really say much else about it. It's very simple and can also get pretty hard. It's got plenty of boss fights, so especially a secret boss fight, which wasn't as hard as I thought it would be because I, I I leveled her up so high up there that it didn't even matter. So yeah, Little Witch No Better. It's just, it's such a good game. And number 11 right above Little Witch No Better is a game that I will admit I almost rage quit on multiple times. And that is Phenotopia Awakening. I really love this game uh, for t because of time constraints. I'm not going to bother taking it all the way out. You could check out the unboxing video that I made about this. And you can even check out my top 10 sleeper hits video where I actually thoroughly talk about this and show off the contents that are inside. I just don't feel like fully taking it out because it's going to be some work with that slip cover and multiple layers. So. Phenotopia Awakening is definitely worth picking up if you like the original Zelda 2 and how that plays and it can get brutal but it does have easier modes which honestly doesn't make it that much easier but it becomes a bit more tolerable. Music is great, The honestly the combat's kind of fun even though it can be brutal and storytelling is really good and I just love the characters, I love everything about this game. I can't say much more, it's just really awesome. Okay, so we are actually down to our final 10 games. Um, we're going to kind of just wrap the things up and get through them a little quicker. I'm not going to really open up um, each one and show them off as much. I might quickly show them off, but I'm not going to take out the cartridges to show them individually. But I will be opening them up uh, and briefly going over everything. And number 10, I picked Crosscode. No surprise there. Well, maybe some of you might have thought... It could have been higher uh, on the list. I am still in the middle of playing this game. I am in the final level of this game, and I gotta say, this game is tremendously better than Phenotopia, in my opinion. I've mentioned this before, and I'll say it again. Basically, this game is like a MMORPG minus the online interaction. It's got its own story. It feels like an MMORPG because the characters themselves have their own lives supposedly outside of the game world that you never get to see. And you play as this girl, of course, with a typical amnesia trope thing. But then you are basically informed of what's going on with her and then find out later on what really is going on. And that twist just kind of grabs at your heart. It's really, really good. It's got so many different twists throughout the game. And I highly recommend it for those of you who like tops, who like top-down Zelda games and puzzle solving. The puzzles can get brutal and pretty hard. And honestly, if it's too impossible for you, don't feel bad for looking it up. Um, the gameplay itself is really nice and simple. You can level up, of course, by grinding. And I highly recommend grinding as much as you can. Um, it also does have a new game plus, which is really nice, that will also contain unique dialogue, so, really cool. I really love this game, CrossCode is definitely one of those top games I recommend for anyone. At number 9, right above CrossCode, I had to pick Animutationum. Animutationum is one of those cyberpunk type games. 
basically, yeah, you become the cyberpunk one girl army. It's like almost like a metroidvania in a way with different sections throughout an entire map that you can visit. And it goes from side scrolling to freely roaming around like 3D all while looking like a flat pixelated game. Of course, she's staring into your soul there. <laughs> I highly recommend this game for anyone who likes cyberpunk type games and likes the whole OG like 2D pixels to 3D if that makes sense. It's a little bit mixed of both. It's a really good story, really good music. I highly recommend it. Uh, the only issue that I've ran into on the Switch of course is that it has very long load times. I really hope they patch that out. Um, there were some game-breaking issues that I ran into before where I got stuck in certain areas, but after doing a simple uh, soft reset, I was fine. So, um, I highly recommend just saving the game as much as possible when you play the game. Um, and number eight, I had to pick Dragon Quest XI S. Dragon Quest XI S, of course, is the very first Dragon Quest game I have ever played and fully voiced, actually mostly voiced, there's a lot of dialogue in between, of course, that you have to read. This, of course, here is the Asian uh, steelbook case that I bought online. But, of course, I have the U.S. version of the game. If you like turn-based RPG games, I recommend it. It has three full acts, so meaning three different endings and three different, uh, three different sets of end credits. I highly recommend it for those of you who like turn-based RPGs. And for those of you who have been skeptical on uh, trying Dragon Quest games, Dragon Quest XI S is definitely recommended in my opinion. And number 7, right above Dragon Quest XI S, I had to pick Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Yes, we have another slipcover here. And of course links are in the description of where you could buy those. Of course the Definitive Edition contains a small DLC, which is barely several hours and honestly like it's okay but um the game itself xenoblade chronicles definitive edition um is phenomenal uh i honestly played xenoblade chronicles for the very first time ever on the 3ds on the new 3ds back then and uh i fell in love with the game and as soon as i got to like an area called the saltoro marsh uh, I had to pause and just listen to the music. It was really good. And I finally was able to revisit this game on the Switch and fully complete it. And it took a very long time. Xenoblade Chronicles games are no joke. They will take you a very long time to complete. But I gotta say, it was phenomenal. And really great story. And that is why it is above Dragon Quest XI S. Next up, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is right above... Xenoblade Chronicles 1, which is of course number 6 on the list. And the only reason why I picked this above Xenoblade Chronicles 1 is because the music is even more phenomenal. Way more phenomenal than the first game. The story is deeper, it's way darker, and probably the only Xenoblade Chronicles game that I will actually say and admit that I actually cried at the end. I'm not even kidding. And then immediately got mad for reasons you'll be y'all y'all know what i'm talking about if y'all played the game <laughs> anyway this of course is another slip cover really nice from the same guy like i said link will be in the description for his etsy page show him your support and message him and let the, let him know that i'm the reason why you bought his slip covers i don't want anything out of it just either way just let him know i i i, I told him i would uh show off his stuff in all my videos especially uh whenever i talk about these games so i love this honestly like first epic boss fight uh sounded like the the theme sounded like the final boss music it was crazy i, I can't say much else except this game is phenomenal we are now down to the remaining five of my switch games oh boy and number five I had to pick Undertale. Yet another slipcover. Yes. <laughs> Undertale is such a phenomenal game. Undertale is one of those games that you can actually play in a truly pacifist run. Or pretty much any way you want in a neutral run. Or if you want to just 
kill everything and do a genocide run, you could do that too. Personally, I can't bring myself to play this any other way than the peaceful pacifist run. It is such a gorgeous game. The music is wonderful. It holds a special place in my heart. I really love owning this on the Nintendo Switch. I can't really say much else because I, I do have a time constraint. So yeah, Undertale at number five. And number four right above Undertale. Yes, I actually picked Omori. Omori is way darker. It is a psychological horror game. It is definitely nowhere near the same as Undertale or any other like light-hearted game like uh, Earthbound or Mother Series. Definitely nothing like those games. And with that being said, this game is phenomenal. The story writing is insane. And when you find out what's really going on at the end, it will pull at your heartstrings. And with that being said, I still think about this game to this day and look forward to replaying it again and having my wife Cammy uh, re-experience it with me. I love Omori. It's, it's just such a freaking good game. Yep, number four. And number three, I had to pick, of course, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. I grew up with these games on the Game Boy Advance. I've played them countless times. And I gotta say, this is one of the best collections that I own as of right now. Like, this contains so many freaking games all on one cartridge. It's awesome. It gives me hope for the future of seeing more legacy collections such as Mega Man Star Force, for example. I love the legacy. I, I love the Battle Network series. I love the story and all the games. I'll play them again and again for many years to come. Now down to the last two games, and oh boy, this was pretty tough to do, but I did it. I did it for you guys. And number two, I had to pick Eastward. Yes, Eastward. I'm getting a little tired, guys. It is pretty late. This is why I'm sounding a lot quieter towards the end of the video. Had to get the Japanese version because honestly, the cover just looks a lot nicer. And I love the fact that it also is in English right on top here. Comes, of course, with stickers on the inside. I'm not going to take all that out. But, but I did do an unboxing video on that. Eastward is a great homage to Earthbound and Mother series. Honestly, I'm still in the middle of playing this game and the game it reminds me of the most is Mother 3 and that says a lot because I really love Mother 3. This game is phenomenal, the music is amazing, it's all action based and it even has a game within this game called Earthborn. Yes, I'm not even kidding. And uh, what's funny is the protagonist of that game inside of this game uh, looks exactly like the protagonist from the third Dragon Quest game. I'm not even kidding. There's just so much love put into this game. It's gorgeous. I highly recommend it if you love any of those games. And that's number two. Now, the last and final game. I saved the best for last. Okami HD. Yes. I'm not even kidding when I say this. Okami HD is the best game of all time. In my honest opinion, there is no other better game than this as of right now. Eastward came very close. But I gotta say, the more I think about Okami HD, I, 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 I have to say it is even better. Yes, this is another custom steelbook case here. I'll try to leave links in the description for everything, or at least put it up here where you can buy it. This is the Japanese version, of course, the only way you can get the physical edition, which is quite upsetting because I really wanted the US version as well. But there's a cartridge, of course. Really nice. I hope someday Rowan MBP UK makes a custom booklet for this that matches, hopefully, you know, the PS2 booklet or even the Wii one. It doesn't matter to me. Some sort of instruction manual. But yeah, surprisingly, this uh, slip cover actually does fit on here. But yeah, no, this game is phenomenal. I love the music. I love the story. I love everything about it. I played it on the channel with my wife, Cammy, uh, to completion. You could check out that playlist in my playlist section i may forget to put it in the description here but you can check out you can check it out in the playlist section all in all i highly recommend okami hd for anybody who loves zelda who loves like adventure games it's it's definitely worth it it's got a phenomenal story phenomenal scenery 
phenomenal music. Yes, I'm overusing the word phenomenal and I don't care. The art style is timeless. This game is a timeless treasure in my opinion. And even though it's not a one-to-one -to, -one to the original PS2 version, I still highly recommend it if you haven't played it. So some send-offs uh, to some games that I no longer have. Um, I'm only going to mention three um, at the end of this video that I no longer have that I've had for years. I've gotten rid of them because overall games I used to own um, that used to be in my original collections that you no longer see here. I got rid of them for reasons. Uh, number one being Scott Pilgrim, uh, the movie The Game. Uh, I got rid of it because it just stopped being fun for me. It wasn't as fun as River City Girls, you know, became fun for me. And so I, I saw it on sale uh, digitally for five bucks. So technically I still own it digitally, but I got rid of the classic edition. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get it again, but at that time I just gave it up because I wanted to get Rain Code. And so I no longer have it, so I have to give it a proper send off. Uh, number two, of course, for proper send off would be Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. I've had that for years, and I mostly ever played it with my friend Dan. I never really played it on my own. It just became less and less fun to play, and I eventually um, gave it away. Or not, not gave it away, but I traded it away. And um, it was a little hard to do because it's such a good game, but it just became less and less fun to play, so I had to give it a proper send off. And third and final game that I had to give up uh, as a proper send off would have to be Untitled Goose Game. Uh, I gave that up because honestly it was a very short game and even for that type of short game after once I beat it once I just I couldn't bring myself to playing it again and the more I looked at it the less I the less it brought me joy and unfortunately I had to give it up you know I had to give it up so uh, with those send offs being said if you made it this far in the video go ahead and leave me a blue heart emoji. That lets me know you watched the video up until this point. A uh, link will be in the description below for a Discord invite if you want to become a part of the Discord. You must be 18 years of age or older to join. And um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of all this. Uh, I have a challenge for you guys. If you made it this far, uh, there is no prize for this at all. This is just more for bragging rights and it's to help me out. A little bit of a challenge. You don't have to do this at all. I know there's probably one person I know and I will not mention his name, who will do this. Um, a little challenge I have, if you guys want to watch my older unboxing, or sorry, my older previous Nintendo Switch game collection videos, and uh, compare them all to this one, and let me know in the comments below, along with the emojis I've asked for, um, and let me know, uh, at least up to five games or less um, that I no longer own that you feel that I should get again. Let me know in the comments below. Like I said, five max or less. Um, this is just a little challenge I'd like to present to you guys. Again, there's no prizes, no winners or anything like that. It's just more of a little silly challenge I'm going to put out there. Um, it helps me out. Um, if there's any games that I no longer have that you feel that I should, uh, get again, please let me know which games you recommend that I should get again that I no longer have in my collection. And please tell me why. I need a good reason why. Not just, oh, you should get this game and that's it. Um, please give me good reasons why as, as to as to I should, uh, why I should get those games again. But thank you guys so much for watching. This was a long project. Uh, this took a lot out of me. <laughs> I will say that I'm very tired. And I'm pretty sure editing this later on is going to be pain in the ass. Um, but I did it for you guys. You guys are awesome. Stay safe. Be excellent to each other. And uh, check out my Patreon down below. Or even become a member, a YouTube member uh, membership on my account. I uh, have exclusive perks and such. And uh, show your support. Or even join my live streams. And you can even send me... Uh, Super Chats, uh, showing your support, you know, for all the hard work I'm trying to put into this channel. All while working full-time uh, with split shifts, which takes a lot more out of me, so. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, you guys are awesome. Be safe, be excellent to each other. And most importantly, please subscribe.
Bye-bye.